Good day students, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to use this wonderful resource called Pimp My Drawings to really add some detail to your Revit models. Okay, so this resource, I'll give you a link to it as well. You'll notice that it will give you a free collection of people, trees, cars, plants, furniture okay you can buy packs from this website so you can see that you can buy packs but they're quite expensive so the free resources is enough information for you to create a very basic um, drawing package it's all 2d and we're going to use this information to add some depth to our Revit drawings so while looking at the library I'm going to select any sketch for time being and when you hover over this object that I want you see it allows me to download a DWG file so I want you to go and download a DWG file then save it on your desktop so you can use it for later okay so save it on your desktop press save okay now once this is on your desktop and we open this using AutoCAD for example we can have a good look and see what this information looks like in CAD. Now in the meantime I would open up Revit, have Revit open because we're going to make 2D detail items using this information. So when I get this information there's two things I like to check. I'll make sure that the scale is correct and you can see this is coming pretty accurately. I like to go and check the eye for dimensions and I like to check the height of this. Just roughly and you can see this looks pretty accurate. One point so this looks pretty good. Okay, because once you've brought the stuff into Revit, you might find you might not be able to change this later on. Okay, so that's slightly higher. So an average person is probably 1.6 meters high. Okay, so 1650 one maybe. Let's pick at the top here. If I scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, you see that this is almost two meters. So this is a very large person. So if I just go and press scale, scale everything, get this to the correct scale. So I would just make sure if you're using these resources, R for reference, I'm going to scale from here, go to the top here. I'm going to make sure that that, sorry, scale. It's not asking for a base point, select a base point shift right click opens up the shortcuts nearest and R for reference so I want to scale it from here R there and that must be 1650 okay good I'm happy with that press save so now I've saved this AutoCAD file okay great now I'm gonna jump to Revit so once Revit's launched what you need to do is you'll need to go and start a new in families new family you're gonna make this a metric detail item metric detail item you're gonna press open okay so once this is open you are now simply gonna go to insert import import CAD and you go and find this CAD file on your machines okay so find the CAD file and you're simply just going to keep everything as is for the time being and you see it comes in nicely the next thing I'll do is I'll unpin it and move it to a good location you can nudge things up and down a bit okay I'm pretty happy with the result this is looking good the next step I'll need to do is I'll need to explode this so I'm going to go to fully explode so it makes everything part of the drawing Okay, now if you hover over the, some of the line work, you'll notice now that this has brought in the information correctly. While you're hovering over the line work, you can use the subcategory selection to make sure what each line is. Now this is quite important to understand. When you are making detail items, you'll need to control this in your project file or model file. You'll need to make sure that all of these things, so you're going to use a lot of these, make sure that they have the same characteristics. So, and categories so that you can quickly change them all in your project file to meet the needs in your project so by which I mean if you go to manage and you go to object styles you'll see you've got outer and inner 
For example, if this is going to be a series of people, if you're going to make a whole library of people, you'll need to make sure the subcategory in each one of these is exactly the same. So here I'm going to go rename and I'm going to type in people beforehand, copy and paste this. And you're going to make sure that these all have the same name if you've got multiple families and they're using the same information. What I like about this, I can quickly change the colors here. And for now, I'll make people outer, make it line weight two. Keep that one and I'll make this a darker gray. Remember, anything that adds context, you don't want it to overpower your drawing. It must be secondary and be light in the background. And you'll notice that this will work really well and it's starting to work well. And I can switch on my line weights. Just remember, this is a great tool if you're working. Okay, the last thing I'd like to do, if you're going to use people like this, you want it to mask information at the back. So the quickest way to do this is select the outer line, select all of those line work. So here I'm just holding down control. Okay, now the quickest way to do this is to select the line work, go to the glasses and say isolate category. Now I can select everything. I can use the cut function. If these are created well, this should be straightforward create and we need to create a mask so a filled region in this instance filled region and we're going to go paste align to current view so you see it's brought everything in if i finish the command then it's worked fine okay so i'm going to go reset now you can see it's made a hatch but it's not the desired hatch that I'm required for, um, to see so i'm going to go and change i'm going to go edit type you can simply replace the concrete one but this might cause issues in your project so i'm going to say rename I'm going to call this people shade and remember if you're making multiples of these you'll need to keep sending this information from project to project okay so just bear that in mind you'll need to keep making the same okay here I'm going to say solid fill and here I'm going to say I want this to be a very light gray press ok press apply press ok okay now if the information's disappeared, it means, I'm gonna select some line work beneath. It means that it is not a proper line or symbolic line. We'll need to convert that to a proper symbolic line. So that's quite a good thing to understand. So if you just hover and you find any bit of line work, you can then use the glasses icon again and isolate category. Then you're gonna select all of this line work and you're gonna use the convert lines in the model tab at the top, convert lines, You'll need to convert these lines from model lines to symbolic lines. Now, if I switch everything back on, you'll notice that this really works and looks great. Okay, now, just remember one thing that this will mask information and I'll show you later on when we come to use this. Okay, but in essence, I'm happy with the results. So I'm gonna go file, save as, save as, family, and I'm gonna save this in my families. I've already made a person, so I'm going to just call this person number two and I'll share all of this family information with you and talk about this a bit later. But in essence, you're going to go and find people. I'm going to call this people two because I've done the same exercise already. Okay, great. So I'm happy with these results and this will work well. Save this and we're going to use this later on in one of our families. But in essence, if I just go and open up a new project so I'm just going to open up a so open I'm just going to open up a project and by the way in your library I have given you information so I've given you some example Revit files that we can open up as well so let's just go to Hatfield this is a great example so I'm going to go to SD Final, I'm going to open this model. Might upgrade, so it might take a bit of time. So I'll pause this for the time being and then resume the video once it's loaded. Okay, so I've opened up an innovation that I want to use and just use this as an example for a project. So if I grab this information and I load into project, you'll find I can use this symbol and it works really well. Now there is some issues sometimes, you want things to hide behind. So what you might have to do in these instances is, is use masking region, so annotate, mask region. So these do come with a bit of a catch, you'll probably need to mask these objects from time to time. 
I'm just showing you very quickly how you would go about doing that for example and I want to send that to background so let's bring this to foreground bring to front bring forwards so you can mask and then recreate the line work very quickly so there is some catches to doing this workflow but you'll notice it's quite easy to populate these scenes so these facades work fine because it'll hide information at the back and it doesn't overpower the facades okay so you can see this works really well you can populate these views very quickly with these detail items okay now how to use these again and again if you go to annotate just remember this is a detail item and you go to components you can then use this whole library again and again and again in addition to this library you're also going to have access to if you go to insert so there's a whole nother library that you'll have access to so if you go to insert and you go to load family so load family Autodesk family from the cloud make sure that your region is set United Kingdom okay so go back there again so load family load family United Kingdom we're going to go to detail items okay so let's just go and find some more information like a tree for example so detail items usually there's different categories there's a whole extensive category library here for detailing so go and have a look at this but usually this is categorized as entourage so if we go to entourage you'll see that there's some other people there's trees so for example if I just grab one of these trees quickly these are not very um, these are not the best families but it will give you some information to work with but if you follow this workflow I did for this one you'll notice that you can actually create some really nice information okay so I'm just going to use a tree very quickly now you can see I can put the tree in the background or foreground okay so we don't want to use a lot of the 3d trees because it is limited and you're going to have to work with levels so for now I would advise you to do a lot of this work in 2d rather than 3d and it's not going to make your drawings very heavy as well it'll keep your drawings very light and what's nice about this option is you can always see the facade information in the background okay remember these are 2d items so if you want to transfer the information between views you have to copy Control c and you have to copy them so you have to copy them between views okay and now I can paste them here and then reuse okay so these are very neat the way they work so this is actually quite a nice workflow you can also make these objects so if you go and overwrite graphics you can also so if you go overwrite graphics by element okay so if you over you can also change the transparency of these but this does come with a catch because if you export this view you must make sure that you're going to export this view correctly so that it captures that information but there are techniques to make these look really good but in essence I'm happy with this result these work really well okay so you can put them all over the place make them transparent you can overwrite these and make them really like um, by element you can half tone them as well which will make them even lighter and they'll sit way in the distance as well so that's another technique so it's like he's behind the glass for example okay so there's a lot of these techniques that you guys can employ but for now I just want you to create your own library of these people so you can start using them in your drawings okay you don't want to put a whole lot of 3d people in these drawings it's just going to make these files very heavy okay so a whole lot of 2d information just like this and you can populate your drawings with very useful information.